So when Drew's offered an invitation to a fellow dealer's home, he never says no. Dealers tend to keep the best things at home. They do. They just do. That's why I love to go to my mate's dealer's houses. And you go, look at that. He goes, oh, yeah, not for sale. And that's sort of like mine. If something ends up at my house, it generally means I'm keeping it for a long time. Sometimes you go to dealer's houses because everything's for sale. But um, you still got to walk in with your eyes open. Drew and T are fortunate to start their buying trip with an invitation to a dealership in a private home 180 miles southeast of Conway. Today we are off to Chipping Camden in the loveliness of the Cotswolds, and um, we're off to meet Robert and Rachel, who are fairly new dealers. They run Kendall House Antiques, and it's from their house. All oh, right, yeah. Do you know I love the Cotswolds like yeah. like ridiculously, but I just love everything about it. I think you love the Cotswolds in the same way as I love the, the M6 Toll. <laughs> you love the M6 Toll? Oh, it's, it's possible to love a motorway, yes. Do you? Yeah. Why do you love the M6 Toll? Because people drive properly on it. <laughs> people don't sit in the middle lane, they don't sit in the outside lane. So I've got an, outst an, a, an outstanding area of natural beauty and you've got a motorway? Yep. That's well, the M6 Toll might go through an area that used to be an area of outstanding beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Originally a new town created in the late 12th century, Chipping Camden was granted a market charter, earning it the name Chipping, which means market in Old English. It became an important center in the medieval wool trade, allowing the wealthy inhabitants to build beautiful houses from the local Cotswold stone. In later centuries, many medieval cottages received a makeover, and behind some of the Georgian facades lie much older medieval half-timbered structures. Located on the high street in an 18th century house, Kendall House Antiques is run by partners Robert Chinnery and Rachel Jones. We opened the business about 10 weeks ago, so it's all very new and exciting and enjoying what we're doing. We started the business later on in life, so we had a bit of catch-up to do, but um, I'm sure we've bought some nice things that people will like. And we're buying for ourselves as well, so if ever we bought some and it never sold, we'd be very happy. Well, we are looking forward to Drew and T coming today. He does buy quite a few different items, so hopefully there's something that he'll like. Hello, Robert. Hello. That's it. Drew, hey, how are you doing? Hello. Hello, Hello Rachel. How are we? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Um, can we have a look inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah please come in. Yes, it's, only the heat. it's only small, but That's all right, come so in. are we. Wow, lovely. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. This is fab. It's not what I expected at all. <laughs> You've got a bit of room spare there. You could have got more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's lovely. It's lovely. So, I mean, you live here? Yeah, we live here. OK. Uh, this used to be the living room. We've moved upstairs. OK. It looks great. Do you know if you walk in somewhere and you go, this is like a rich environment, like lots of colour and everything hitting you, this is, this is great. Your receptionist is looking a bit rough, isn't she? The receptionist, she, she ain't been... <laughs> she's not eating <laughs> a lot. <laughs> We're with Robert and Rachel, and they're running their antiques business from, from their house. It's great. They've really gone for it. They're fairly new to the business. They've been antique collectors for years, and um, they're doing what they love. All the stuff here is really punchy, good things. I mean, it's a mixed bag, isn't it, in here? You've got yeah. all sorts of stuff in here. Can I open this? Yeah, of course you can. What's this? I was looking at. I think the sword's meant to be broken. The man lost it in battle, I think. OK, Grand Tour Plaster Arm of the Borghese Gladiator, impressed C. Smith, London. There's one thing that catches my eye in the cupboard there, and it's a plaster arm. There was two or three big firms turning these out, two in London. That's one of them, and it's signed. Signed with an address on it, so we can pin it down fairly easily. Looking at it, I think it's... Very late 19th, early 20th century, looking at it. That's where I think it is. Um, and it's definitely something that I'd like to buy. It's nice. Yeah, it's got a feel to what it. What are you asking for it? OK. What am I asking for it? What was on the ticket? 1600 mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going back in the box. Yeah, fair enough. It's, uh, it's very nice, though. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. That's the, the nicest thing I've you seen. You can always bid me, Drew, don't you? I will do, but don't I don't want to fall out with you immediately. You won't fall out with me. OK. It's a very nice thing. I'm not sure if there's a profit left in that for me. 
Can we come back to it? Yeah, of course. Let's we can. have a think. This sixteen hundred pounds. That's a bit more than I think I can get for it, but it's a nice one. So I don't want to go both feet in straight away and start cutting them in half and lopping bits off this, that and the other. I want to give myself time to think and just go through and see if there's any other bits I can sort of put together maybe. I don't know, I don't know. But right now it doesn't feel right just to jump in straight away and start giving prices. We'll just wait. So you've always bought antiques for yourself? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, can't buy anything new. It's yep. the best form of recycling. I can't have a new item. Because we buy the stuff for ourselves, really, we don't do, we? We do, yeah. It's the best thing you can possibly do. OK, can we have a look? There's more through here, yeah? yeah? Go through. Yeah. After you. It's very smart in here. Yeah, it's lovely. I'm it's glad nice. you like it. No, it's nice. OK. So, you, you, you used to live in, in, in this bit? Yeah, downstairs, yeah. This Mind is... if I have a sit down? Yeah, um, not at all, am we? Yeah. It's nice. I can see your sort of taste. You like good things yeah. that people have spent time and effort on and they've got a bit of heart. What, what, which bits do you pick? Do you do it jo jointly between you? Um, I like the arts and crafts. Do you? Yeah, oh, okay. which, funnily enough, we've sold more of since we've been open. Just saying. Than anything yeah. else. You're just saying, are you? <laughs> 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 just letting you know, just right? Just letting you right, know, yeah. I'm yes. selling more. But than norm you are. normally Rob does all the buying. I like your little cards. So, circa 1850, English country house tabletop cabinet mahogany with inset bone plaque. What does it say on the top? I can't see from here. Bills and letters. Oh. Funny surname. <laughs> <laughs> and the best thing on this that I really like is the paper labels. Yeah. I really like that. Another thing I'm looking at is this wonderful country house tabletop mailbox. So, remember before emails existed, you'd write letters, even I remember this, and you'd post them out. So, if you were running a very large country house or a business, you wrote a lot of letters. And that is a box where you would put your letters and you'd lock it up when you were finished with them. This useful mahogany letterbox and organiser was probably made on a busy country estate in the early 1800s. They used a variety of hinges and locks which were repurposed from other pieces of furniture to make this bespoke item that could be worth up to £600. This one, you've got 650 on it. What can you do? I know where I'd like to be. I'd, I'd be happy to pay £400 for it. Yeah, you'd have to be 450 I couldn't do it any better than that. OK. Needs to be no questions asked, nothing to do. Nothing at all. On the money. Yes, all right, fine. Yeah, I can make a little bit of money. Thank you. OK, thank you. I can make you. a little bit of money on that one. This one's lovely because the more you look at it, the more it tells you. So it's got a lock on it, so you'd put private things in there. It's got a handle on top, so you could carry it around with you as well. And what really gives it that value is that wonderful piece of bone on the top with the letters etched into the top there and dyed with some ink. It'll sell well, put a little bit of profit on it, move it on. The plaster arm. All right, yeah. How negotiable is that because it's... A lot at the minute. Yeah, it's more than I could get for it. Okay. Do you want to go and have another look at it? And, and, uh, yeah. Or I can bring it through, whichever you. Or, prefer. Yeah, or bring it through, and I'll. Like, I'll go and get it. I'll go and get it. Yeah. Let me go okay. Yeah. Desperately trying not to trip. <laughs> look out! He's armed. He's armed and dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Mm. So it looks. It's dead on right. It's dead right. Absolutely dead right. Marked up. Lovely. The hand's very good, isn't it? Yeah. The colour's good, you know? But it's all the money. What can it be? 1,200 quid. T, can you do me a favour? Yeah. Can you hold it on that wall? The muscles on the arm, they're well formed, aren't they? Mm. It's great. This yeah, the, uh, this is quite good as well. <laughs> <laughs> Will a grand buy it? No, sorry. I'd love to sell it you for a grand, but it owes a tad more than that. Drew and Sue are in the Cotswolds, visiting a private home that doubles as an antiques business. Wow, lovely. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. This is fab. It's not what I expected at all. Drew's taken a shine to a pricey plaster replica of an arm copied from a classical sculpture. Will a grand buy it? No, sorry. I'd love to sell it you for a grand, but it owes a tad more than that. Eleven fifty. Yeah, go on then. Yeah? Go on then. Yeah. Thank you. It's nice to see you go out on a limb. 
<laughs> You've been waiting to say that. How long have you been waiting? They're going to sort money in a minute and I can say it. <laughs> it's a very nice item. A very nice item. A lot of these are damaged, got bits missing, old repairs, etc., etc. This has got nothing wrong with it. It's in perfect condition. It's got the correct little wire hanger built in at the top and it is clearly marked by the maker. That really helps. And it's a re just a good thing. So, £1,150, we own it. Well, did you say you've got an outbuilding? Yes. Can we have a look in there? Yeah, of course you can. This is the kitchen. Oh, I've got my little eye on you, look. That's great. Did you do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there was a knot there, so I just drilled it out and dropped it in. I love that. Good. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Loving your garden. Yeah, it's great. And this is, oh, I like this. You've done a really nice job on everything. I like it. And you've left that. I like that too. Yeah, it's a lovely door, isn't it? Yeah, oh. I like that, yeah. Ah, OK, so what's what's the deal with this like? It's your uh, workshop? It's just my workshop, yeah. I've tidied it for you. What are you doing with all this stuff, then? Is it uh, for sale or are you using it? Yeah, it can be for sale, yeah. This is it's just my workbench and the drawers I use. They're a bit hammered, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They've yeah. been cutting half as well. They've cut yeah. them up. Yeah. It's nice, though, the uh, fitting. CG, you don't know where that came from. CG, CG. No, I don't. It's not bad. It's certainly got a look, hasn't it? Yeah. So we now come into Robert's workshop, and as soon as I walk in, something grabs me, and it's a big bank of drawers. These are something I've bought forever. They're instantly attractive. Whatever you do with them, in any interior, they look cool. Now, I'm looking at this thinking, ding dong, here we go, lovely, love this. This large bank of office drawers dating from the early 20th century is made of oak with handsome cast bronze handles with the letters C and G embossed on them. The top and the base are in good, though worn, condition. And once renovated, these drawers could be worth up to £2,000. It's a really... It's an interesting thing. It's just... What are you going to put your screwdrivers in? <laughs> I'll probably spend a 1000 quid on boxes. What do you want for it? £1,100. Yeah, all right, £1,100 sold. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. It needs a fair bit doing. There's just one drawer that's sort of thrown everything out, but apart from that, we're all right. They're a bit... Some of them a bit sticky, but... Uh... That's OK. That's all right. I like that. You know, you sticky drawers you go for every time, though, don't you? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> 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 we'll get it back to the workshop, give it to my restorer, Pip, and give him about four days on this to get it just right, but we'll keep it that wonderful dry, untouched colour, and we'll keep all the numbers that are written all over it as well. Then we've got something really very, very saleable. Really saleable, trust me. Kendall House Antiques today has been, honestly, a really enjoyable, lovely day. Meeting the guys has been a real joy. They've made a beautiful job of the showroom. Hats off to them. Until you try and do that, you don't realise just how much work it takes. That's a lot of hard work. For me, the buy of the day is the large cabinet with all the drawers, because it's exciting. It's like finding an old car in a barn. You look at it and it's full of expectation and full of potential. And that cabinet is. I'm going to end up with something very, very beautiful and incredibly saleable. We've had a great day. Yeah, it's been really enjoyable. We didn't expect him to buy as much as he did, so we're, we're very happy with that. And it's been an absolute pleasure, and we've enjoyed every moment of it. That was good. I enjoyed that. What lovely people. Yes. Incredibly enthusiastic. Really, really keen. Look at this place. It's beautiful. They've picked a beautiful village to be in. Bought good things. The arm, really nice. There's not a lot of money in the arm. Did um, you check? <laughs> yeah. But we should sell it handy. Yeah, yeah. That big oak cabinet. What did he do with all this stuff you tipped out? Uh, he got lots of cowboy boxes. He was very organised till we bought that. He, we made a mess of his shed. Yes. It's not the first time. Intrigued by the mystery of Drew's disembodied plaster arm, which seems to evoke a virile, muscly hero of ancient Greece. Rebecca is off to a surprising location to find out more. I love a bit of detective work. And this arm that Drew's bought from Kendall Antiques has really fired up my imagination. It's just so beautiful and decorative. I mean, over the years, we've had 
many reimaginings of whole sculptures. So to research a fragment is quite difficult, and that's why I've come all the way to Whitby. Rebecca's research has revealed a complete replica of this ancient Greek sculpture may be found. Danny. Hello. Welcome to Whitby. She's enlisted the help of Danny Hartman from English Heritage. What a view. It's gorgeous, isn't it? But there's something over here that I want to show you as well. So here it is. It's stunning, actually. It is, isn't it? Well, I think this could be our chap, actually. I mean, look at the way he's holding that broken sword. Mm -hmm. Because if I show you my pictures, you will see there is oh, our I see. arm. We've got the vein element mm -hmm. clutching. Yeah. yeah. It looks very, doesn't very, it? Very, very yes. similar. It's, it's yes. the vein that does it. It's the vein it that's is. in the exact veins, same place. Yes. So, what can you tell me about this chap? Uh, well, this is Whitby's um, Borghese Gladiator, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a sort of a, a copy of a copy. Well, the original dates back to about 100 BC, um, and it was found in what is today Turkey, but would have been ancient Greece. And it sort of moved around Europe quite a lot um, as sort of armies came in, stole it, moved it on. And then in about the 1600s, it ended up in a villa in Rome called the Villa Borghese, which is where it now gets its name from. And it was actually Camillo Borghese who sold it to um, the brother-in-law, who was Napoleon Bonaparte, who you might have heard of. <laughs> I have. <laughs> he picked it up, boxed it up, moved it back to Paris and put it in the Louvre, where it still is today. This ancient Greek masterpiece was so widely admired that countless copies were made, including one for Charles I. Another keen admirer of the piece was Sir Hugh Chomley of Whitby, who ordered a copy of his own. Sir Hugh Chomley II, when he built his new house, basically wanted to copy it and have one of his own. A sort of, uh, oh, look how wonderful, oh, I happen to have one of these as well. You've got one of these, I've got one of these. Aren't we so cultured? So that's how he ended up here. I'm just a fountain of knowledge <laughs> now and very enthused by...
I think the sword's meant to be broken. The man lost it in battle, I think. OK, Grantor plaster arm of the Borghese Gladiator in Press Seasmith, London. There's one thing that catches my eye in the cupboard there, and it's a plaster arm. There was two or three big firms turning these out, two in London. That's one of them, and it's signed. Signed with an address on it, so we can pin it down fairly easily. Looking at it, I think it's very late 19th, early 20th century. Looking at it, that's where I think it is. Um, and it's definitely something that I'd like to buy. It's nice. Yeah, it's got a feel to it. What are you asking for it? OK. What am I asking for it? What was on the ticket? 1600 mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going back in the box. Yeah, fair enough. It's, uh, it's very nice, though. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. That's the, the nicest thing I've you seen. You can always bid me, Drew, don't you? I will do, but don't I don't want to fall out with you immediately. You won't fall out with me. OK. It's a very nice thing. I'm not sure if there's a profit left in that for me. Can we come back to it? Yeah, of course Let's we have a think. It's £1,600. That's a bit more than I think I can get for it, but it's a nice one. So I don't want to go both feet in straight away and start cutting them in half and lopping bits off this, that and the other. I want to...